be giving you a short description of how I executed my RC robot, remote control robot, information about the circuitry and the components I use and some pros and cons of this project. So I have all my content put in place in my site under RC robot 1. I have put in the schematics for the transmitter and the receiver, also the Edu 93D motor driver circuit. Also, you can see a small video of uh, me playing with my remote control robot. So I don't have the robot right now since it I had to disassemble it to make version two, and then later on it had it, it was disintegrated, and I have parts around but not the robot as such okay let's start up let's see the parts that I've used and how I've built this robot okay there you see that's my remote control so going close to the IC that's the HTC HD 640 I don't know if you can see the IC number it's, it's HD 640 IC that's the whole tech encoder and also we have a voltage regulator here which is a 7805 and as I already told you HD 640 is an 8-bit encoder which will encode your 8-bit 8 inputs into one single output which is transmitted through the RF module so looking at the buttons I have four buttons here and four buttons here and also this four dip buttons that you see is mapped to this so I can either use this pins or I can toggle these bits and use this pins as well and as I already mentioned there's a resistor was mentioned on my site in the schematic which was a 360 ohm resistor I couldn't find a 360 ohm resistor so I added a 330 and another 30 ohm resistor in series so that which would act as a 360 ohm resistor and so there I have my on off power switch and I have a battery connector wherein I'll be connecting my 9 volts battery and the other part and here I have two filter capacitors just to filter out any unwanted signal since I'm using it with a DC battery source even without the capacitors the circuit would do just fine and the single standard wire that you see here is nothing but my antenna for my transmitter and the missing part here in the circuit is this RF transmitter which is a 434 MHz transmitter so transmitter is basically four pin wherein like one pin goes to ground one pin goes to the supply the other pin is connected to the data and fourth pin is nothing but the antenna pin the circuit the transmitter has a good decent range even without the antenna but with the antenna on that's just connecting a single standard wire the range can be extended uh, and one more thing about the transmitter is that you get the same module which would operate at different frequencies wherein one is like 343 megahertz 433 megahertz 433 megahertz so you can pick anyone on 315 megahertz which you can see on my circuit earlier i had a 433 one but now i've replaced this that with this so you can use you can pick any of those any one of the frequencies and you should be able to operate your remote control robot very well without any hitches okay let's go okay. there i see i have my receiver so going close taking a look at the IC there, that's the whole text 648 decoder. I guess you can see the number HD648L, and 
also I have a 7805 voltage regulator in this circuit as well which would regulate my 9 volt battery supply that I'll be connecting to this connector to a 5 volts which is needed by the whole tech decoder and the RF receiver module which would go here and the single standard wire you see again is nothing but my antenna to extend the range of this robot okay oops okay we have the side and taking a closer look at the circuit as you saw uh, two resistors connected in series I've done the same thing to my receiver to my decoder IC as well and apart from that as I told you there were eight switches eight inputs to my IC since this is a eight channel encoder it converts eight different inputs into one single output which is transmitted through this RF module and coming back to the receiver the single channel stream data is received through the RF module which goes here and data after demodulation goes into my decoder which decodes the single packet single packet of data into 8 bits as a parallel output so at a time you get you can operate 8 different devices using these ICs and the other circuitry which you could have you might have seen in my schematic is using a transistor is what you can see here the transmit the data is the, uh, the LED for indicating whenever a data is received correct received and decoded correctly so there might be there might be package of loss drops of packages of data and when during the transmission and the IC automatically discards that packet and hence doesn't blink the light but when a when a proper data is received it's decoded and the data is matching with what and and if there is no data error then this LED glows and indicates that okay yeah the data received is fine and I can go ahead and do my operation D1, D2, D3, D4 which you can see here in two different colors connected here is rooted to my H bridge so earlier I had used uh, L293 D IC so I had I had to come with an alternative for that L293 D so what I did so one of the sites I could find one high ampere current rating H bridges which you can see here so this is my H bridge you see four different tip transistors here which are nothing but high current Darlington transistors and then four smaller transistors so this complete circuitry acts as a single H bridge so since I need to drive two different motors I need two different two such H bridges so I have two such circuits so all these were prototyped I then build them on the four pins that you see here is two pins is the data pin that is the D1 and D2 and the other two pins is 5 volts and ground for this we need to supply a voltage source to this circuit so the same voltage that you see here and here I have this this where I tap out my motor output so taking a look at the wheels that I used for my version, con version 1 remote control robot this was it this was a wheels this was the wheels which came with a, a rob with a toy that I picked up from a shop which I disassembled and I could get this gears and wheel set and this is where the DC motor would well, would would get in and would be fixed and it was connected to the H bridge which would drive this motor so this was quite fast and it was it was very zippy but the only fact was it used to burn 
It used to fry off my Edu 930 ICs, which was a bad thing for me. So I came back to this, to these motor hedge bridge, which worked very well with my cheap wheel set. And finally, with this design that you see here, I I had made a tank robot, which you might be which you which you would find in one of my pictures which are sliding through in my home page and I've used this toy motors okay these are quite famous these days I can show you one of those I have a few of them being stocked in my place okay so this is the this is a motor they call this as a bow motor bo motor so it uses that same toy motor with some gears inside and you have the shaft coming out of this out of this kit wherein you can connect one of the wheels like these so these wheels would go directly on that and you screw you screw it up tightly so that this wheel get fixed to this motor so this is actually a good thing you have ready-made packages which is available and these motors come in different several different rpms that's a very good thing for you. okay guys I have my setup ready here just to show you an example of how the circuit works I have I don't have my RF modules right now they're screwed up I don't know what have done to them it's been a long time since I've used them so I don't I don't find it to be working. I figured out that part for later. And the basic concept still remains the same. You press the button, the button is encoded by the encoder, and the data is serialized and is transmitted through your blue pin, which is in turn connected to one of these transmitters, which then transmits the data through the antenna and that is that data is received by this receiver down here the antenna that you see and it's demodulated by one of these receivers and the data is given into the decoder and then the decoder converts the serial data into parallel output that you see which is connected to the hedge bridge here and with the hedge bridge in turn drive my RF modules are not working I've shorted the data pin from here to pin this pin to here which now instead of transmitting the data through air it transmits the data through this single cable that you see okay let me power, power that up okay you can see the blue led glowing so on the press of a button the led blinks indicating that the data has been received properly now this button Okay. On the press of this button, you can see the LED blinking, indicating that the data is received properly. And when I press the other button, it runs the motor. Okay, this runs the motor in one direction. This runs the motor in the other direction. And when I press both of them together, you can see the braking braking operation. This stalls the motor so that when you even if you try to turn it, even if you try to rotate it, the motor wouldn't move. 